Scientists say that SpaceX Starlink might cause global destruction. And astrophotographers are pretty pissed also. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of green tea, a little bit of misty morning and focus combination. The bergamot, the zing of the peppermint. So good guys, so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, whatever you have over there, hanging out with me, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. That's what we do here. That's what we do here. So before I get into it, I want to say thank you to a really nice guy, Sean Mueller. He sent me a Christmas gift. I know guys, it's February, but he sent it from Canada and it literally took forever. It took like well over a month and we got this a couple of weeks ago and I want to say thank you to him for it. That's what the cover looks like. He did some astrophotography and I just want to show you a couple of things. But before I do, the little note that he wrote to me, I'm not going to read all of it, obviously, but I found something funny here. He says, I run a forklift repair business in Toronto and I made this calendar as a Christmas gift for my customers, family, and friends. It's also a good way to justify some gear I just had to buy in order to market my business. That's what I tell my accountant when she asked me what forklift needs a Sigma 14 to 24 f 2.8. I love it. Anyways, he goes into detail about each individual image in here, but I just want to show you something real quick. Obviously, this is the cover right here. We have a really nice shot. Can you see that? No glare. That's pretty good. The moon, that's at 600 millimeters. That is with a Sigma 150 to 600. Now, page two here, this is February, and this is perfect. This is absolutely perfect. You probably won't be able to see it, but this image right here has this streak going through it. It's a vertical streak. And that streak is exactly what this video is going to be about. Perfect. Thank you so much, Sean. I really appreciate it. Apropos. So I want to get into this a little bit with you guys and give you some background. There is a lot of scientists that are upset, let's just say, with Starlink and other satellite constellation owners, let's say, as well as a lot of astrophotographers are not really happy either. Why is that? These streaks, well, they're affecting a lot of things. Mostly, and more importantly than all, is the means for us to be able to monitor the skies for any type of pending doom. Asteroids that are coming into our area, we need to be able to track them. And I want to get into some of the things that have been transpiring and I want to get your thoughts before the end of this video. I think it's very interesting, not only as a photographer's point of view, but also as a scientist's point of view. So anyways, let me start out by saying SpaceX, if you don't know, I've been doing a lot of coverage on Starlink lately and I find it fascinating and I'm giving it to you guys because a lot of you have been asking me for it. So I've been giving you a lot of information about it. Anyway, SpaceX has over 2,000 satellites currently in LEO or low Earth orbit um, positionings, okay? They're about, let's say, 500 to 550 kilometers off the ground, maybe 350 miles, I think it is, let's say, right around there. Anyways, the U.S. federal government, the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, has approved Elon Musk, Starlink, or SpaceX to be able to launch up to 12,000 of them. And that's before they have to do the mother may I um, all over again and ask for permission for more. According to what Elon Musk is saying is the long term, they're looking at about 42,000 satellites they want up in orbit in LEO. In comparison to right now, there's only 2,000 or so. So they have a long way to go. But they are definitely exponentiating the amount of launches happening. Just recently, they just launched about 49 satellites, but supposedly 40 out of those satellites are going to be falling to Earth, like right now, or burning up in the atmosphere, let's say, due to some geomagnetic storms that were going on. And I'll get into that maybe in another video. Very fascinating. Anyways, according to a spokesperson from the Zwicky Transient Facility, or they call it ZTF, they said due to Starlink, the number of streaks that they see in their images 
are about 35 times as to what it was back in 2019. Now, 2019 is when Starlink came on board. There is other companies that do LEO satellites, but Starlink has put a lot up there in a short period of time. So the ZTF people over there have been quoted in saying, I'm going to read it as they said it. We find that the number of affecting images is increasing with time as SpaceX deploys more satellites. The new International Astronomical Union, or IAU, launched the Center for the Protection of Dark and Quiet Skies from Satellite Constellation Interference to help answer the problem. They continue by saying, we estimate that once the size of the Starlink constellation reaches 10,000 essentially all ZTF images taken during twilight will be affected. Now the director of this brand new center was quoted in saying, the mega constellations are the biggest threat facing modern astronomy. Now what this director is trying to do is gather together astronomers as well as the mega constellation operators like SpaceX, as well as regulators to try to find solutions to the problem. Now some of the things that they're working on to solve the problem is one, new software for the various observatories, as well as number two, adjustments to the actual satellites themselves. Now, what are they going to do with software? Well, basically, since we know exactly where these LEO satellites are at any given time, I'm going to guess, I don't know, I didn't hear this anywhere, but I'm going to guess they're going to try to make these satellites stealth to the observatory. What does that mean? Well, if you know exactly a pinpoint where each one of the satellites are, you can tell the software, the algorithm behind the scenes to say in this spot at these pixels or at these 10 pixels or four pixels or a hundred pixels, make that blank and we will replace that later. Let's say a second later or four seconds later or an hour later, whatever, replace the data. So in essence, you're stealthing those long trains of or constellations of satellites that are coming by, which would be interesting. Now, the other thing that they were talking about was making adjustments to the satellites. How are they going to do that? Well, one of the things that SpaceX has been working on is this extremely dark black paint. So it is less reflective. And when you see these satellites in the night sky, instead of them reflecting right back to you, the sun, especially during twilight, you won't see them because they would be simply black dots or nothing at all because they will be non-reflective. That was the other thing that they were thinking of doing. Now, bear in mind, these streaks are not permanent. And a lot of people see these streaks as being something that is there all the time and that's how they process, let's say, around the globe. No, that is not what happens. Basically, these satellites get launched and they follow each other in a train around the Earth. And over time, sometimes as quickly as maybe 25 days, 30 days, sometimes as long as 200 days, these satellites will move into their locations, let's say. Now, these locations are not like permanent locations where they stay all the time. They are constantly moving around the planet, but they're staying on the same pattern, let's just say, in comparison to like a geocentric satellite that stays in that location all the time. So they are moving, but they do disperse. So you're not going to see these lines continuously. Once they do disperse, then there'll be little dots all over the place. What would also be really nice, now I haven't read this anywhere, I'm just thinking about it while we're recording, what would also be nice is to be able to get those satellites into their final locations quicker. So instead of it taking, you know, let's say 25 or up to 100 days or 200 days to get to the specific fixed location, allow them to break apart quicker and move into those locations. So you no longer have those trains or those constellations spinning around that are disrupting a lot of things. Astrophotographers as well as scientists, right? Just an idea. Anyways, this photograph here shows what one of those satellites look like. You can see two of them here. But this image right here really shows a major problem. All of those streaks are from the Starlink satellites. This was captured in 2019 over at the Lowell Observatory in Arizona. So this gives you an idea on how bad it can be, especially when they're trying to capture the night sky. 
a lot of these scientists are not just trying to journey throughout the universe and see what locations are out there, but they're also trying to safeguard the planet from rogue, let's say, asteroids coming by. Right? So we need to be able to see these, and this is what their point of contention is. Now, SpaceX has been taking the brunt of all of the negative press when it comes to these satellites, even though there is a lot of other companies flying birds overhead also. There is Amazon's Keeper as well as OneWeb. And now I just heard that China is going to be, in the not too distant future, launching up to 13,000 satellites, once again, in LEO or low Earth orbit. That is a lot, 13,000 from China alone. Now, unlike companies like SpaceX that are really trying to tackle the problem, like I said, with certain types of paint, I think it's called dark sat as well as visor sat, means of, let's say, reflecting or deflecting that shine or that glare, as well as putting a seriously dark type of matte finish on them to try to make them as stealthy as possible. Whereas we know companies over in China are probably not going to be as friendly when it comes to the satellites. Now, here's another image from the Zwicky Transient Facility. This is Andromeda Galaxy. And as you can see, that right there is a satellite or a train of satellites that is coming through the image. Once again, this is problematic. Why? Because any type of telescope or any type of observatory that's trying to reach extremely distant locations that are very, very dim need to leave their shutter, let's say, as photographers, open for a long period of time, right? To capture in as much light as possible. Well, the longer you leave it open, the more likely you're going to end up finding one of these satellites whizzing through your image. And that's what seems to be going on here. So we end up with these images that are ruined. Now, I did read an article over at the Wall Street Journal where they interviewed a NASA spokesperson about this problem. And what they said is that satellites, quote, have the potential to interfere with ground-based observations by increasing the complexity of differentiating artificial satellites from natural objects like asteroids and comets. Now, like I said, that is a major problem when you're trying to circumvent global destruction by possibly launching up missiles to blow up an asteroid that's coming to hit us, right? Armageddon, right? Now, I read another quote over at the Wall Street Journal from an Eric Bellum, and he is a University of Washington astronomer, and he said, the streaks should not compromise the image's research purposes, but they could complicate efforts to detect potential hazardous asteroids. The article continues with, the study's researchers argue the chances of streaks that could hinder the spotting of dangerous asteroids remains small. However, quote, the number of images affected by satellite trails is alarmingly growing as more and more Starlink satellites are being deployed into orbit. The Zwicky Transit Facility in San Diego was put into operation to watch asteroids, and they are being severely affected, like I said before. Now, what they also say is that one-fifth of all images are disrupted by Starlink satellites, and once 10,000 satellites are placed into LEO, or low Earth orbit, every single image will contain at least one streak. Now, all this sounds really dire, right? Well, what I did find out, I think one of the articles that ZTF put out there, this was a while back, they talked about the images that they were taking, the images that they were getting. The streaks were accounting for one-tenth of one percent in all of their images. One-tenth of one percent. So how dire is it? Eh, as of right now, not so much. But even though the impact seems to be really small right now, I still believe that this can turn into a really big problem down the road, especially when you get companies or even countries that are not as nice, let's say, as SpaceX. They can impede upon possible discoveries that might not ever happen if the night sky is strewn with all of these satellites. So what are your thoughts? 
maybe as an astrophotographer? What are your thoughts as a scientist? What are your thoughts as simply being a good steward of this amazing blue marble that's floating around here in nowhere? What are your thoughts? I want to hear from you. So guys, I hope you found this interesting, even a little bit. If you have, please throw this video a thumbs up. That'd be awesome. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel as of yet, please subscribe and click this little bell icon over here. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for yet another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Love you all. Thank you so much. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.